In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left done, undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayer of the Day O oh God, our Shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. comes from Acts, the second chapter. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. I'm Tom Johnson. This is Psalm 23. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading comes from 1 Peter, the second chapter. For it is to your credit if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are being beaten for doing wrong, where is the credit in that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you would follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. For our children's sermon on this Good Shepherd Sunday, we have two parts of it. First of all, we'd like to thank Chris and Cindy Nelson for their three lambs, Rachel, Stuart, and Tony, that uh, their mother wasn't able to give them milk, so Catherine and Cindy and I went out last week and we bottle fed the three lambs. I bottle fed Rachel. Jeez. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, this works perfect. Three lambs and three feeders. Okay. And they oh, look awfully hungry, too. All right. Uh, how long does it? We hear you. We how hear long you. does it take them to usually finish off the bottle? It depends. Yep. A couple minutes. Okay. <laughs> yep. All right. Pretty quick. Pretty quick. Wow, she's really going at it. All right. All right. Okay. How young are these? They're a month. They're four, four weeks. Four, Stand up. Four weeks Stand up. Yeah. So Mike can see you. So, Catherine, are these your 4 H projects? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very good. There's something special now, Cindy, about the formula or what they're getting, or just? It's just a, like a lamb replacer meal. Okay. I think we have a winner here. Catherine's is almost done. Yeah. Here, yeah, new boy. Yep, all done. <laughs> all right. Come on, girl. It's me. Come on, girl. And as I thought about those lambs that we were bottle feeding, I was thinking about children are like lambs and the ewes and the rams are like their parents and they're a part of uh, something bigger than just the parents and the family they're a part of 
the extended family of the church that we are called on to as we fed the, fed the three lambs, so too we can feed one another, our children. That's one point of our Good Shepherd Sunday. The second one I'd like to show you is a picture that's particularly meaningful for me because on, this, on one side it says Mother's Day gift from the children, 1946. That was my grandma Alice Jager wrote. And up here it says to Reverend Gwen Sanderson, 1975. That's when Grandma Alice Jager gave me this uh, picture for my ordination. There's uh, several things that are interesting about this on Good Shepherd Sunday. First of all, the sheep down here, you'll notice there's 12 of them. And the ones that are closest to Jesus are the ones that are all looking, at, looking to him. You look back over here, the ones that are farther away from Jesus, they're just looking around, uh, not necessarily to him. Secondly, the little lamb here, if you'll notice, the foot is uh, down. I've wondered if it's been injured. And so Jesus is holding the lamb close to his chest to protect him. But there's something that's um, more interesting about this. If you look at Jesus, he's knocking on the door. But if you think about, if I knock on something like this, where are my eyes? Well, my eyes are looking at where I'm knocking. Look at Jesus' eyes. He's knocking on the door, but where is he looking? He's looking at you. You're the one that Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. And that's what the Good Shepherd does for you and I, whether 2,000 years ago or in 2020. So listen for the Good Shepherd as he knocks on the door of your heart and as he, as he cares for all the children, the little lambs, and for all of the big sheep that are in his family, the Church of God. Amen. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way as a thief and a bandit. The one who enters the, by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger. But they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Gospel of John, the 10th chapter that I just read, the 11 verses, the reading is clumsy and not very clear with the uses of speech that John has put into Jesus' mouth. I'm not saying that Jesus didn't say this, but the reading feels as if it were being translated in a very busy office by someone writing down the information 
while being, while being interrupted many different times with very poor light in an underground bunker. That's what it reads like. So if in your imagination you can put yourself in the place where this particular text has been shared and see if you can connect the dots, but I'm going to read it from Dr. Swanson, who uh, came to our church way back, uh, which is uh, he, his text, which is highly unusual, different than what I just read, but it might help us to hear the text differently. So this is out of the chapter 10 of John. Amen, amen. I am talking to you all, the one not coming in through the door into the courtyard of the sheep, but going over another way, that one is a thief and a bandit. The one coming in through the gate is the shepherd, a shepherd of the sheep. To this one, the doorkeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, his own sheep he calls by name and he drives them out. Whenever all his own he should cast out, before them he travels, and the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. Another they will not follow, rather they will flee from him. They do not know the voice of the others. The proverb he said to them, Jesus did, they did not know about what he was talking to them. He said then, again, Jesus did, Amen, Amen, I am talking to you all. I am the sheep gate. All, as many as has come before me, are thieves and bandits, and they did not hear them, the sheep didn't. I am the gate. Through me, if ever anyone should go in, that one will be rescued, and will go in and come out, and will find pasture. The thief does not come except in order that he should steal and kill and destroy. I came in order that they should have life and that they should have too much. I am the shepherd, the beautiful one. The beautiful shepherd stakes his very being for the sheep. It's a little different reading. Um, if, you, if you didn't know better, um, what we have today is the, the issue of Jesus uh, coming and talking about thieves and bandits and usually that would be anybody that, in Jesus' understanding, that wasn't really teaching the right way, wasn't leading people in, in a good way. <clears throat> and so he, they, he comes up, but then he talks about, you know, Jesus, Jesus talks about that he is the gate, that he is the gatekeeper, and then also that he is the good shepherd. <laughs> so he has all these different uh, metaphors that, uh, that could be used, figures of speech. And for the most part, it seems as though people didn't understand. So if you're still scratching your head wondering about it all, just know this. To get into the gate, to get in through the, uh, through the gatekeeper, to get into the sheep pen, you have to go through Jesus. It's pretty simple. It's not real difficult. And yet, there's some interesting wording that you'll find um, in the midst of uh, what, uh, what you heard. If you, in the uh, initial text that I had read, it said, um, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. But Dr. Swanson doesn't talk about abundantly. Dr. Swanson uses um, two words instead of one. He says he, that they would have too much. The Greek word for abundance is parison, um, but abundance doesn't capture the full meaning of the verse. Dr. Swanson's text changes uh, parison from abundance to the idea of too much. Truly the word, which is an ad adjective in this case, describes over and above, more than you can well imagine. But I will use Dr. Swanson's too much idea of continuing in the theme that everyone in God's kingdom is to have too much. We all know, though, that most people have too little. We live in a world that most people struggle to have enough to eat and to pay the rent, with currently 30 million people not having a job because of a virus, and of those 30 million not having a job of those that those folks might actually love to go to, because it just makes enough. 
and leaves many of them with too little. How do we make changes in this world so that we can have an equitable share of wealth given to all? Not an easy answer. And yet Christians, as we are called to advocate, advocate for our neighbors at all times and in all ways, I'm calling on you to read Martin Luther's small catechism because he gives some great explanations. His understanding of our relationship, not only to God, but to our neighbor is insightful if you read through the Ten Commandments. So what do we believe as we are the church? Not a building, not a hospital, not really a business. And though we operate as a place that is a building, we have uh, and often a hospital for the sin sick soul and like a business we have bills to pay and services to render again what is Trinity Lutheran Church's mission what is our purpose why do we exist they're great questions for a time such as this where no one is meeting in person and everyone is shuttered everything is shuttered how might we develop our church using our homes and computer programs like Zoom in the short term? And how might we exist in the long term? I have this idea while we still sit in our homes, and that idea is for you to be the church in your own home. Zoom is free for a short 40-minute session. I'm calling on you to use your home as a place of worship and to invite two other families to a Zoom meeting to meet during the week in teaching fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer. And you don't need to be a trained theologian, just a willing participant in God's kingdom. Until we can meet again, could we as a church create 20 cell groups that meet during the week at a time when you as a group might choose to meet? For instance, it could be the Ottermans, the Gillises, and Pastor Quinn as a, as a church cell group that would meet. I'm just using it as an example. But if you know people within this church family that you would like to gather on a, in a Zoom meeting to meet once a week, then the church does start meeting in a different sort of way. You're not just waiting for other things to happen. For me, this is a way in which Jesus kind of comes along to give us ideas to be shepherded, to find a way in which Jesus Christ comes into the midst of us and challenges us to change how we think we should be doing things. Obviously, we can't meet <clears throat> but we can meet in different ways. And so my call for, um, for you, as you listen to what Jesus says, there's only one way in. But the way in for all of us as the body of Christ, God does something amazing in the midst of us, gives us an imagination to listen, to pay attention, and maybe to utilize a new technology that you've never used before. Um, it might not just be that. You could probably figure out other ways. I, I heard uh, Lila talking earlier where she, they, a group of them got together out in the parking lot, all spread apart with masks on and everything else. There's just different ways we can meet as the church without getting each, giving each other the coronavirus. So Jesus is the good shepherd and we have, we have a time set before us to be the church. God has called us to be. We are called to live into sharing the too much abundance of God's loving grace and love. And may you find fellowship and connection with the body of Christ. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing in the risen life of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church, strengthen ministers of word, sacrament, 
and service who are called to shepherd your people. Renew your church and unite us through your spirit. Send us out to serve our neighbors and to receive their care with gratitude. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the earth, for pastures and prairies, rivers and streams, oceans and mountains, for those who care for livestock and pets, for all animals, wild and domestic, with whom we share this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations guide leaders into the path of peace. Uphold all who govern, bring an end to injustice, warfare, and violence. Protect those who risk their lives to shield others from danger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, for those who lack safe housing and adequate food, for workers whose pay is insufficient to meet their daily needs, comfort the grieving and heal the sick. We especially pray for Jim Nyberg, for Mark Broderson, Kyle Hirsch, Mary Lou Livingston, Christina Lloyd, Daryl Mahoney, Heidi Otterman, Jerry Pollard, Amanda Putnam, Annalyn Schmidt, Suzanne West. Be with all of these. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this assembly, Trinity Lutheran Church, Yankton, South Dakota. For ushers, acolytes, and greeters. For those who clean and prepare our space for worship. Give wisdom to our council's committee and all who guide this congregation's ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for people, all of us, affected by COVID-19. Lord God, guide our steps. Show us the path. Keep us safe. Keep us from harm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died in the faith. In your goodness and mercy, bring us to the fullness of your promise to dwell in your house forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Joining our voices with your faithful ones in every time and place, we offer our prayers in the name of the risen one, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all, and also with you. Let us share that peace one to another. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.